I'm here in Berlin. I have the pleasure of being part of Bosch Connected World 2019. Uh, we're at the end of day one, and I have the pleasure of being joined by Nick Sharma. Now, Nick is the project lead for Bosch's Economy of Things project, uh, which I guess is a, a cousin of DLT, or distributed ledger technology. In some cases, uh, people talk about blockchain. Nick, thanks for catching up with me. Great to see you. Thanks, sir. Firstly, Thank congratulations you. on a really exciting event. Uh, you know, we hear this uh, concept of the event doubling year on year, but it literally does that. It's uh, so much interest in this space, particularly the whole topic of Internet of Things and all mm -hmm. things related. Um, firstly, maybe just tell us a little about yourself and your role and, and what is the uh, economy of things? Yeah. yeah, well, I'm Nick Sharman and I am the project director of the um, project you mentioned, Economy of Things. It's an advanced engineering project, so it's uh, between research and product development. Um, the name Economy of Things comes from, from the idea there's the Internet of Things, where things communicate um, between each other, and we want to um, drive it one step further, that things not only um, communicate, but really exchange values and strike contracts. Right. Um, and um, the analogy for economy, our free market economy, works in a decentralized way, so there's no Soviet-style central authority yep. who does the link between demand and, and supply. But in our economy, there's, it's, there are rules, there are um, contracts, and everything is decentralized. And this idea is also reflected in the setup of the uh, Economy of Things project. So we use uh, distributed ledger technologies and multi-party computation to achieve this decentralized um, matching of demand and supply. So you've had a couple of exciting projects I'd like to delve into. One in particular where you worked on a project where there was a car that negotiated its uh, relationship with uh, charging stations, and particularly the pricing on charging stations. What can you tell us about that project? Yeah, so uh, obviously we are here, at, uh, this is an electric car, and these cars need uh, frequently charging stations, and there's a, um, uh, a large amount of different charging pole operators out right. there. And, and this car needs to, if you think about that, these cars will um, become autonomous yep. uh, in the future. These things need to talk to these charging stations, but not only talk, but really to do contracts with them about charging. Right. So you could do it in two ways. You could either have a, a centralized platform by one company where all the cars connect to and all the charging poles connect to. So you have this classic platform monopoly thing. Um, which is good for the company that operates this um, char uh, this, this sure. platform, but it's a problem for all the other um, uh, parties right. in the ecosystem. So we want to have this central platform, which is a good thing, because we don't want to connect to numerous different um, small platforms, but we don't want to have this one entity that controls everything. And here comes this uh, decentralized uh, um, ledger technology into place. So we have this car here. This car is equipped with an agent. So it's a piece of software with okay. an attitude, basically. So I can tell this piece of software, I don't want to pay more than 50 cent per kilowatt hour. And I have this range anxiety. And then this car can um, communicate and also negotiate with charging poles on the contract. And if um, the charging pole and the contract agrees, then this contract is um, deployed in a distributed ledger, in a blockchain, so to right. speak. And then the settlement starts and this energy flows. I love it. It's almost like the inverse of bias in artificial intelligence. It's now working towards the consumer in the car versus the other way where it's uh, advertising on social media platforms convincing me to buy things I don't want. Yeah. Um, one of the things that comes up in these sorts of conversations is how do we monetize this technology? How do we put it into not just a, a, an exciting project like this where you've proven the, the case actually works and the business model works, but what sort of conversations should people be having inside their boardrooms and, and, and through the rest of the organizations about where they start just getting a conversation going around monetization of this technology? Mm -hmm. So I think um, it, there are two parts to this answer. Um, I think from the monetization point of view, it's strikingly simple. Okay. Um, That's good news. It's good news because in, in the platform uh, business and data business, business models tend to be quite complex with service-driven, data-driven right. business models and so forth. Or the other part is um, uh, try to get a monopolistic platform and then extract rents from right, that. Right. And in this approach, in this economy of things approach, and this platform will be run in a cooperative way, so it will be cost-driven. It's a bit like an infrastructure. Okay. And, and people can build um, service and product business on top of this. In, in, the, in the case of the Bosch product, that would be a, a vehicle control unit mm -hmm. in the car, mm -hmm. which already is sold by Bosch, um, equipped with an agent-based software and a crypto wallet that then can um, do its thing. 
So from okay. a business point of view, it's super simple. You don't, you just um, continue product-based business model right. and, and you can try to focus on good products yep. and do not have to focus on building a platform which locks everybody in. So that's the, 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 the strategic point. And if you talk about what the um, bots need to uh, talk about and think about, I think there's one nice um, phrase that um, really wraps it up. It's uh, called co-opetition. Yep. So it's a, a mixture between um, cooperation and competition. So you have cooperation on this infrastructure layer. We build it together with DLT technology, for example. And, but you can still have competition on top of that. Right, right. It reminds me of the, the, the journey we've been through with, I guess, the transition to handheld phones and then smartphones and applications on those phones and then different types of services on those applications, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and now we're sort of taking it to big moving things like cars and other massive pieces of infrastructure. So I, I would love to then ask you one last question, if we don't mind. Um, next 12 to 18 months. So let's, you know, the event's over. It's been an exciting event. Uh, Bosch Connected World mm -hmm. 2019. Love being here. But everyone's boxed up, they've gone home. Uh, next 12 to 18 months, what are you working on? What's your team going to be focusing on? And I guess what does the ecosystem around that uh, need to be thinking about it to, to where do we go? What's over the horizon in your view? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, for uh, recently we um, achieved a, a great success that we were able to um, talk and cooperate with other um, big companies on this approach. Okay. Because I mean, it's, it's a, a, a huge shift from, from trying to um, fight each other to build right, a, a right. platform to, um, well, let's think about doing something in a cooperative way. Okay. So in the past, we built these proof of concept systems like this car where we have um, with uh, Siemens, for example, built this um, um, infrastructure access, so parking lot access, and with ENPW, a German utility, the um, EV charging. Right. So, but these were proof of concepts that ran for a few hours. And, and um, the next month will um, be focused on building systems that run longer. Not yet operative systems that, that really can work for, for years or so, but yeah. really going one step further into the reality. I guess that's uh, you know, taking a lot of what we've seen in the enterprise world around fell and fell fast and learning from that process and then transitioning to agile models of continuous development and continuous yeah. improvement, isn't it? It's like you've got to get a version one and then a version 1.1. Mm -hmm. Well, Nick, thank you so much for making time to catch up with me. It's been great to see you and uh, congratulations on an exciting thank project you. and a great event. And we really look forward to what's uh, coming out of you and your team uh, and the rest of Bosch uh, globally in the next 12 to 18 months and beyond. Yeah, thank you for talking to you. Thanks very much. Bye. Cheers.